Hey guys, this is Tim, back again with another video. And today, just a quick tip uh, on something that I got a question about from a friend of mine. And I thought maybe it would be interesting to create sort of a, uh, well, to, to create a quick video about how you can do something uh, like this. So the thing is about uh, culling from the camera. And we're gonna go over some alternative things that you can do with the same technique that might be interesting for stuff like particle simulations. Right, so what I have here is I have a whole box with a whole bunch of uh, stuff here. And now let's say we have a predetermined camera animation and we're gonna need to export this thing and we just want it to be well, as light as possible because maybe we're gonna need to export it to, to Maya and we have like a whole very heavy particle simulation in the center here and we don't wanna export the whole thing. So we don't wanna export the stuff that's visible because the other stuff is kind of redundant. So how can we go about doing that? It's actually quite simple. Um, it's, a, it's, an in, it's an interesting technique and kind of teaches you some concepts about how to use Houdini. So what we can do is, and by the way, how this was set up is just with the new Houdini 18 copy two points and then with the instancing stuff. Anyway, um, so how you can do this is you if you put down a UV texture node, we're gonna use a UV texture node to do this. You can put it to perspective from camera and we're gonna set it to points so we get a point UVs and then we're gonna point this to our camera so you might ask why use UV for this well what it does is it creates a UV from camera space and the cool thing about this is that everything outside of camera space will be uh, negative or above one so everything uh, below zero will be uh, well, off, off to the side and above one will be off to the other side. And then the UV.Z is just the, the depth in the, uh, in the Z axis. So that's also something we can use later. So the cool thing with this is that we can now use this to do our camera culling. So we're going to use a little wrangle for this. And I know some people are a little bit intimidated with wrangles, but wrangling is actually not that bad. You can also use some of the other nodes, but sometimes it's just faster to wrangle. So I'll just type the wrangle and I'll explain what I will be doing so you can, well, so it makes sense for you as well. Let's make an attribute wrangle. So we wanna start wrangling over these points. You can see these attributes here and I just discussed, well, I, I just uh, pointed out that, that we wanna delete everything that's uh, below uh, zero and, ever, and, and above one in like every, well, every, every axis. So we can, for example, say, so these are the components. So this would be component uh, X, Y, Z, basically. So we can say that if at UV dot X, so that's gonna be the first component, if it's below zero, we're gonna be we're gonna type remove point from the first input, because it's the first input. And we're gonna type at point number. So because we wanna remove that current point number. All right, now we, we already saw something happen there. So you can see it already curled out some of the stuff over there. So if I go and move my camera, you can see it will remove the stuff that's on, over there on the left. All right, so we also wanna do it on the other side. So you can do this in the same line or you can do it in an extra line. Let's first do it in an extra line so, you kinda, so it kinda makes sense to what we're, what we're doing and then we're gonna do, it, gonna do it in the same line to also show how that works. So let's copy this. And let's say if it's above one, remove the point. So you can see it removed the points on the other side. So very simple, right? So now let's do it in the same line maybe. So let's maybe comment this out. And we can say um, also that if we use two of those, we can make an additional command. We can say at uv.x is above one. So let's enable that. And you can see it does exactly the same thing. So now it's just checking these two command these uh, for these two commands. And you can see it's calling. So, and this is probably easier because we only need it in one because uh, we only have one one row. So that's probably a little bit easier. Maybe the, the other one was maybe easier to read. So what we can also just do now is just copy this, paste this. Let's make it and just make this one Y. So let's do Y. And also do Y on this side. And I know that you don't see uh, Y in here, but it's basically the same components. If you say X, this is this one, Y, this one, 
uh, z is going to be that one. So now we basically we did it like that. And now you can see we actually called stuff in the camera space. So if I now, if I move my camera, you can see stuff outside the camera will disappear. Maybe if we make two views, it will be easier to see. I mean, let's do a um, two views. All right. Let's move to the side a little bit there. All right. Uh, let's, if we move here, you can see you can see it happening as we go. That's cool, right? So sometimes you maybe want to have like a little bit of a, of leeway because I've had it happen before that like I had a particle simulation and you kind of see them popping in because it happens exactly like it. So it will depend on the size of the objects. You might see them popping in. So sometimes it might be better to do a little bit of uh, leeway. So do minus uh, zero dot one. And then do 1.1 1 .1, so you have a little bit more leeway in the way that you're calling this so then it will have a little bit of an overlap here um because then at least you're sure that it's going to be outside the outside the camera space so there's also uh because we have the z component as well which we haven't really used yet um, and the Z component can actually also be used in a very cool way. So let me show you something you could use this for. All right, so we also have this UV.Z component here. And now let's say we have a particle simulation. And like, let's say it's a very finely detailed particle simulation. And like it leads to look like dust and like very nice and fine. Um, but like what happens if the particles come super close to the camera? Well, if they come really close to the camera, we will see that they are individual dots. So maybe what you want to do is if they come close to the camera, we want to maybe scale them down. Um, so we can actually use this UV.Z component for this. Of course, there's also other ways to, to do this, uh, but this is quite an easy way to, to do this. So maybe let's first call this part um, cool points, so we know what this is doing. And now let's move the UV texture one over here, and it won't change anything because it's just copying it to the point, so nothing really changes there. Uh, but now we're gonna do something below here. All right, so now, now maybe we wanna put a attribute wrangle over here. And now we can start to use this attribute wrangle to do something with this at uv.z uh, component. So let's say we call float r, and we type something like float and then a, a, a word or a letter. That means it will create this attribute, but we will only use it inside this wrangle. So it won't write it out. If you were to type f at r, then it would create a um, an attribute called r. So if I put f at r is one, you can see it writes it out over there. But if I just type float at r, then it will just internally use it. Like if I were to do it like this, you can see there's nothing being written out. But you can still use whatever you generate here. Just keep that in mind. So let's say we want to fit something and we want to fit uv.z. We want to fit it between zero, uh, from 0 and 15. So the second part will be um, which pieces is it going to fit. So it's only going to fit the pieces from 0 to 15. So the pieces that are 15 are 15 meters away, basically. We're going to fit it from that to 0 to, to 1 because you generally want to work within a zero to one space because it's just easier to work with numbers that are uh, from zero to one than let's say minus 0.3 to 44.7 or something. It's just easier to work in a zero to one space. So like just keep that uh, keep that in mind. And now let's say if we say at p scale times equals r, and let's go here, what this will do is it will multiply pieces that can come closer to the to the camera and then scale them down. Um, so now when they get closer to the camera, you can probably see it better if I do it like this and then maybe go outside of outside of the view and then maybe move our camera. You can see like pieces that are getting closer to our camera will scale down. Now maybe we want some control over this, so we can we can maybe do a ramp. Uh, so let's maybe first say that r uh, times equals channel ramp, so ch ramp, 
So if you type something like CH, it will make a channel. So later, if we press this button, we'll get a channel. And we're going to call it ramp. And we're going to ramp over the R attribute. And then we're going to say at P scale times equals R. And we're going to press this button. And we get a little ramp. So now we have some maybe some more control over when it's going to happen. So only the stuff that's like super close will maybe. So if you do it like this, you can probably. Not sure if it's really easy to see, but let's go a little bit closer. Yeah, you can see it a little bit. You can see we sort of get control over where it's gonna ramp in. So let's say if like if this was a was a particle sim, now the, the particles close to the camera would scale down, and then we won't have the weird look of like particles get that are getting closer to the camera to like be super big. All right, so yeah, this was just a uh, little quick tip. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and learned a lot. If you have any questions, let me know. Also, make sure to smash the like button. That really helps out the, U the YouTube algorithm and will we'll get my videos recommended for more people so we can really grow out this channel. So make sure to subscribe if you want to stay up with, uh, with uh, weekly content that I'm putting out. Um, and... Well, make sure to check out my website, timvanhelsdingen.com. Uh, the source files are available over there for uh, for Patreon supporters. So go over there, and also all of the uh, all of the tutorials are nicely are nicely indexed there. So it's just easier to find my stuff. All right. So uh, see you in the next video, guys. Peace.